welcome back. Supertex illegal twin towers will cease to exist this weekend. The buildings in Noida will be demolished on Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Remember, in 2014, the Resident Welfare Association of Emerald Court filed a petition in the Allahabad High Court against the construction of the two towers. The Welfare Association alleged that the towers were constructed in violation of the UP Apartments Act, while the Allahabad High Court ordered the demolition of the towers in 2014, the Supertech had appealed against the verdict in the Supreme Court. Seven years later, in August 2021, the top court upheld the High Court order. Supertech has also been asked to refund those who have purchased flats. Supertech repeatedly deferred the demolition, prompting the top court to set August 28th as the final date. Here's a ground report. I'm standing in Noida sector 104A and behind me are those twin towers that are going to be demolished on 28th of August. Well, preparations are in full swing and as of now, Noida authorities and also the companies that are involved in this particular exercise are getting prepared. Well, the nearby residents are asked to vacate the area because this demolition exercise is going to affect the nearby societies as well. But what about those who are living just far and not very far from their society? 28th, ko, it is going to be a mega day, mega event. Mm -hmm. What you feel about this particular day and, uh, you know, in terms of your concern and in terms of this particular activity, what what you think? Well, I think that, uh, well, I think that what Supreme Court decision, Supreme Court has taken is a good decision mm -hmm. because something which was illegal should be raised down. Mm -hmm. And then after that, the space should be utilized to build a park or whatever was the proposed plan. Okay. In the short term, it might affect the residents who have to vacate the flat, but in the long term, it's a good decision. Towers are adjoining to societies where people are living. Mm -hmm. Some of them have vacated the flat. It was a big issue that they were not provided actual places to go. Mm -hmm. so, so they had to move their houses, elderly people, small children. So it's a big concern, and mm -hmm. we want this to happen smoothly. We are very far, but there are that place is quite uh, densely populated that definitely people around that will be affected for at least few hours. Mm -hmm. So... That's a Sunday, if I'm not wrong, 28th is Sunday. We would like to go out and help also people, whatever help is required. All but right. this is a good step. The face-off between Taiwan and Chinese regime continues after the diplomatic visits of top American leaders as China continues its aggression in the Taiwan Strait via military drills. Taiwan is hitting back in the battle of optics with its own military drills, showcasing the power of its military. My colleague Siddhan gets us the special report on how Taiwan is preparing as the threat of invasion continues to loom. We are at Zanga Daidan Memorial Park in Matsu. On my right, you can see Zanga Daidan written in red bold letters here on the wall. Now, this is the biggest wall which can be seen uh, uh, from anywhere in Matsu. It's on the hilltop and on my left is a port, the main port of Matsu city. And uh, this is a, a biggest center of trade and business for Matsu city and in fact uh, some portion of this port is occupied by Taiwanese army. On my again uh, left you can see Changai Sheikh uh, statue right here uh, next to the port and I would ask my video journalist to pan and give a sense. Now on uh, there just few meters away from where I am reporting there are bunkers the army bunkers currently in the control of Taiwanese army in case of invasion or air raids by China, the people will be, uh, will be given shelter in those bunkers. We are inside Bihai Tunnel. This tunnel was built in 1971 by Republic of China, Taiwan. And this tunnel was planned in such a way so that it, this tunnel can protect the, the naval vessel from attacks and from weather. So the construction was started in 1960, uh, 1969 and it got completed in 1971. More than 820 days, it took more than 820 days uh, for the army at that time to build this uh, uh, tunnel, to uh, excavate this tunnel. Right now it is a major tourist attraction here in Matsu and you can see the boats are still uh, here for the tourists so that they can take a ride 
uh, in this 700 meters long tunnel. We've been told that Matsu Island has several such tunnels and bunkers that are currently being occupied by the army. Now there is no civilian access to those places but they are somewhat in similar format and those bunkers and tunnels are reserved for to save people in the times of crisis. Now I would like to understand from you, post Nancy Pelosi's visit, do you think that, that scenarios have changed and the President Tsai is also trying to start a new style of politics in Taiwan? Now people have started identifying themselves as Taiwanese citizens. They've started talking about independence, they've start, started talking about democracy and now they believe that they will get uh, uh, the independence, complete independence. Well, I think the democracy movement in Taiwan has continued on for several decades. And over these decades, the Taiwanese people have uh, strongly believed um, to, that democracy is part of our way of life and that we do not want to be ruled by an authoritarian government. And that is why most people want to maintain the status quo, that is, keep our democratic way of life, and do not want to face uh, military encroachment or military threats from authoritarian China. Matsu has been described as a front line of democracy, since it is located so close to the coast of communist China. Uh, but I think uh, the very fact that the Democratic Progressive Party is contending in these elections in an area that has previously been considered a stronghold for the KMP and has been ruled by only one party for so long, I think that brings hope and a message of inspiration to the world that even in an area that is so close to an authoritarian giant can also deepen our democracy and witness the birth of multi-party politics here in Matsu.